when I went to a summit on marijuana legalization and what was happening across the nation, all the representatives from the states that were there pretty much agreed that Colorado was the way to not do it. Do it. Okay, that they were all taking notes with this didn't work, that didn't work, this didn't work. So they're learning as they go along, but again, as you can see, this is going to continue to develop and change as they go along as well. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. um, medication abuse, if you haven't followed it in Iowa, um, nationwide, but certainly in Iowa, has really, really been jumping. And medications are gotten from the homes. There's a variety. I've highlighted some that have been in demand. Vicodin, the, the, the opiate medications, oxycontin, hydrocodone, oxycodone, um, Xanax, uh, Adderall especially. Uh, even on college campuses, some college kids are using Adderall to gain an edge in testing and studying, trying to stay alert and, and get those grades and scores up, but still causing a problem for them. Okay, and still the risk of addiction or other health problems exists regardless if they're using it to party with or using it to help test scores. Um, you also have uh, dextromethorphan. Did I say that right? How did I do it? <laughs> dextromethorphan, DXM, and over-the-counter medications. In high enough doses, it can act as a hallucinogen. So you'll have uh, people, maybe even kids, uh, buy coracidin HP, or they might buy uh, some cough syrup that has it, um, and, and they might kind of blend those into some different concoctions that we'll talk about here as well. Uh, kind of connected to the Skittle parties. So, and I think the media, I think uh, KGA or KCRG or, or one of them or both of them did stories on this. Uh, but Skittle parties where the kids will kind of grab different medications. They might get them from grandma's home. They might get them from their uncle. They might get them from friends. Uh, and then they'll take these medications to a party and they'll kind of have a dish and they'll put them in the dish. And throughout the night, you know, kids might mix the pink pill with the green pill and wash it down with their alcohol and energy drink. And, um, in one case in a high school, the, one of the kids that said they actually did this was actually disappointed that they didn't feel anything. They were disappointed because, I, wow, I really thought I would have felt some. Um, so again, that's kind of where things are at. And when you're mixing all these medications, they don't always want to play nice, do they? They get in the body and you have drug interactions and reactions and then you're putting uh, energy drink and caffeine and stimulants and you're dumping depressants in there and it can be a real scary deal. Um, another uh, trend would be scissor or what they call robo tripping. So this would be where they take the cough syrup and they might take uh, say a bottle of Sprite and they might dump a little Sprite out, they'll dump cough syrup in there and they'll grab a handful of Skittles and they'll put those in there, mix it up and now they have their, their drink uh, so to speak. So uh, that, that is Scissor, and actually there was a song out that was all about this. And I don't know the artist, but I remember the song was Flying Like a G6, High Like a G. Have you guys heard that before, okay? That was all about this, okay? Um, abuse of medication. And that was a very, very popular song for quite a while. Uh, as far as how are they getting these, you know, I mentioned the homes, the friends, the relatives. There are people that, be careful when you sell your house. If you sell your house, they will ask to use your restroom, go into your restroom, and while they're in there, they're going to rifle through your medicine cabinet. Take whatever they like, okay? Most of the times when kids take stuff, they're going to take some out of the bottle, take them with them to the party, okay? Because again, they know you're going to miss the bottle. You might not know how many you're, that are in there. They might depend on that. But they know that if they take the whole bottle, you're going to get them. Okay? So they're a little, they're a little smart with that. Uh, Break-ins. And then, of course, there are kind of shady stores that have sold, and uh, they shouldn't be so, selling. So that has happened as well. Uh, there are drop boxes in your county. Benton County Sheriff's Department, Bell Plain Police Department. David, those are in the, you said the front foyers, is that what you said? The Sheriff's Department one is right in the front foyer of the building of the jail. Uh, it's accessible 24-7. The Bell Plain one is right next to the police department door in City Hall. 
and that's only available when city halls are open. Okay, okay. So the advice is if you've got medications you don't need, just get rid of them. Take them to the drop box, drop them in, get rid of them. And that kind of puts a stop to a lot of this if everybody was, were able to do that. So um, kind of keep that in mind as well. Questions on medication abuse? Oh, count, dispose, lock up. All right, so make sure you have an idea. It'd be great if you have an exact count, but at least have an idea what you have. Dispose of unneeded medications. Keep the stuff locked up. And actually, the best place to keep it is not in your bathroom in the medicine cabinet. Not only is it unsecured, but pharmacists will tell you it actually can, the moisture can degrade the medication, make it not as effective. So I would suggest finding someplace else to keep it where only you know where it's at, and it's best if you can lock it up. Questions on medication abuse? Okay. Am I going okay? Is this, is this working for you guys or okay? As far as a look at history, I, I always like to pull in heroin and at least mention it because it does have its connection, at least the increase in use, to the increased prescribed opiate medications. Okay? So when these were increased, uh, when they were trying to get a pain level to zero, if you had some sort of injury or something, they wanted you to be able to walk out at a pain level of one or zero, which quite honestly, when you talk to healthcare people, that they now believe that that's kind of unrealistic. We don't know that we can get you to zero. We might be able to get you to a two. Might be able to get you to a three. There's going to be a little discomfort in some of these injuries until they heal. But when they were going for that, then they really start boosting these pain medications, right? And then at some point, they went to crush-proof tablets. And then we started tracking them, and then the cost went up on them. Cost of heroin went down, it became more available. Uh, it was, now it's available in a pill form, okay? And if you don't know, a lot of the pills for a while, they, they didn't look like prescription pills. They had some goofy little stamp on them, or they had some design or something. Now, these things are being made to look like prescription drug pills. So even though you may see something, take a closer look. Make sure you look it up online. Make sure that what you're looking at isn't back that medication because you might be looking at a heroin pill. Questions on heroin? And I think I'm moving way too fast through this, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Am I good? Yeah, okay. 720. Do you know of any, is heroin a local concern that you know? It, it is. It is. I mean, we, we've, and I think, uh, I think uh, the media outlets have done stories on it as well, that there's been a pretty big jump in heroin use. Um, and it's not uncommon to really hear of treatment people. 20 years ago, we probably wouldn't hear this, but it's not uncommon to hear pe treatment people say, boy, i got a 17-year-old in treatment for heroin abuse. I mean, that's not shocking anymore. Okay, 20 years ago, we would have been like, what? A 17-year-old? Whoa. But now it's, it, it's becoming more accepted. I think sometimes, too, moving away from the needles. Because, you know, let's be honest, kids don't like needles, right? Anything that in, uh, involves me shoving a needle into me, they're probably not going to be stepping forward to, to try that out. But when you have things available in pills, drinks, things they can smoke, things that can go into an electronic smoking device, now that perception of harm comes way, way down, and they're a little more willing to, to use that. Does that make sense? But yes, locally, heroin is one of the things. You talk to law enforcement, health care, they'll tell you the same thing. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of heroin cases. Other questions? So meth, I threw this in here, and I'll tell you why. I, I keep hearing from law enforcement that meth is kind of coming back. It's kind of climbing back up there again. Okay, for years it kind of got down there and we, you know, we, we weren't as concerned about it. It got pretty low. Uh, but now it's coming back up there. And uh, so again, being aware of what's out there, crystal meth, a variety of different uh, powders, a pill form, and then also that these powders may in fact be pink because they might take the meth and actually mix it with like a strawberry quick. So it would be like a strawberry meth. Okay? And if, if that were the case, then you'd have the little little baggie that's got the pink powder all kind of wrapped up in that little that little baggie. Uh, also, be aware of some of the products it, it takes to make meth. 
And uh, most of these can be found around the house. So being aware if, if you're missing a bunch of this stuff and uh, kind of trying to figure out where the stuff went. No, by the way, the, the popular way, from what I understand now, of making meth is that shake and bake. So it's, it's less likely you're going to see the labs, more likely you're going to see the mobile labs. Okay? We're going to have the, the containers that are going to have some of these uh, chemicals and everything put in the container. They're going to go through a chemical reaction period where they are, should not be moved. And then, of course, they'll go through the process to finish it out to turn it actually into the product, okay? Although it's all done generally in a car, sometimes it might be left in a certain area, the rural area. I've heard of it being left behind buildings that normally don't get a lot of traffic, and then they come back and get it later, okay? So again, uh, just kind of changed how they make it. <clears throat> Signs of meth use. Uh, you know, as with anything, all the drugs are going to cause a variety of physical things we're going to see. The way I look at math is it just kind of makes it faster, okay? It makes everything happen faster. And uh, that's kind of what you're going to see with meth. You're going to, you're going to see the, the skin issues, the hygiene issues, the unusual smells. And a, an unusual smell a lot of people aren't aware of is the, the urine odor. Did you guys know that? When somebody's excreting the toxins after they've used meth, they, they'll smell like cat urine. So if they don't have cats, but they smell like cat urine, that might cause you to scratch your head a little. Okay. But yeah, some of those unusual smells like that. Any questions on meth? Yeah? So why are they mixing the meth with, like, strawberry quick? Do you eat it? Um, like, why... Well, let, let's go back to this real quick. So, if I want to attract a new customer, do you think these look as safe as pink powder? Which one do you think looks safer? So it's the color, it's not the... It, it can be the color. Um, the flavor, I don't think, I, I haven't talked to a user of strawberry meth, but I'm gonna guess that's not gonna be the driving force for why they're using it. Um, but yeah, the color changes things, make it, makes it look safer. Uh, kind of like Pop Rocks way back when. Remember Pop Rocks, you guys? Uh, kind of like that. A little safer. Okay. Um, synthetic drugs, and I, David, how, how much time was that again? 745. Okay, so I've got to finish up quick or I'm going to get hurt real bad by all of you. <laughs> um, synthetic drugs, are, that's one that's really been here. Um, it was being openly display, displayed, and then now since the raids, it's kind of went behind the counter. Um, it, it's still being sold. It's generally being sold at head shops, being sold at small convenience stores. Um, most of the time, they're not going to openly display it, just because they're probably going to get in trouble if they do that. But there's a variety of synthetic drugs. And, uh, you know, you've had the Superman pill pop out there. This is that synthetic drug I was telling you guys about, goes into the electronic smoking device. So that's what that one looks like there. Uh, we've had new products, whereas before it used to be K2 and Spice, now we've got Angry Birds, Scooby Snacks, uh, those kinds of things uh, popping up out there. Uh, this one here I do want to mention, sometimes the drugs can be sprayed on a piece of paper. So that particular drug there, I believe, was N-bomb. It was sprayed on this colored card. And then the card is perforated into smaller squares. And a user will tear off one of the smaller squares, put it in their mouth, and the drug will be released through oral. Okay? And then they'll dispose of the square. Uh, so if you see a brightly colored card with kind of a weird graphic, uh, maybe with pieces torn off it, I, I would encourage you not handle it with bare skin, that's why you see the guy there with the glove. Make sure that uh, you take precautions because sometimes it can go through the skin. There are um, powders, um, pills, sprays, uh, plant material, there's all kinds of versions. These chemicals are constantly changing so the law can't keep up with them. So you might have a place that still sells this stuff and you might go in and see it and oh, well that's probably a safe safer version. That's what kids think. They think, oh, that's a safer version. It's being sold. So that perception of harm comes down. Okay? 
Um, in actuality, what it is, they found their way around the law. Okay? There was a new chemical came out, I think it was two years ago, and I think three people in the Des Moines area used a product called Scooby Snacks. That new chemical was in there, and it killed them. Okay? So again, that one wasn't on the Iowa list of banned chemicals. They found a way around the law, and that's kind of how that works. Uh, incense potpourri is usually what the mixture is sold, where it's sprayed on the plant material. The, again, these are a couple of examples. These were actually found in Jones County. These were given to me, uh, the pictures from Jones County. Uh, these are some that are available online. And notice it says 100% synthetic cannabinoid free, not true. Nothing on the package is true, so don't believe anything on the package. It's generally all to protect themselves, some sort of legal stuff to protect themselves. Again, that's the one for the ESD. Bath salts was another version. This one's usually snorted in or, or injected. Though we are starting to hear things of this guy and maybe some of the other synthetic drugs being sprinkled on marijuana cigars and then smoked that way. So again, not good enough to have the marijuana. We've got to add something else to it. This is what some of those look like. And again, they're not bath salts. If you put them in your bath, it's not like Caledon, take me away. Um, it, it's, it's, it's drugs that they're masquerading as plant food or bath salts. Pump of powder is a new one. Uh, that one, to my knowledge, has not made its way to Iowa. It was in Kansas City and being sold for about 30 bucks per tin or jar. And of course, we have Molly, PMA, PMMA. Uh, different pills, capsules that are out there. Uh, some of the other online synthetic drugs that are out there. And then some other signs to watch for. Okay, so uh, seedless clothing has hidden compartments in it where they can hide their drugs. Insane Clown Posse is a band that generally plays very, very violent music. Not saying just because somebody listens to them or listens to Cottonmouth Kings, they have a drug problem. But a lot of it does go hand in hand, so just kind of keep a close eye on it. Also, anything with the Axeman, running Axeman on it, um, can have hidden compartments in their belt, in their hats, that kind of thing. So kind of watch those brands a little closer. And SRH stands for Stoners Wreaking Havoc. Internet sources, all kinds out there. Uh, feds will shut one down, another one will open up. They're going to be out there. Um, so that's something else to kind of watch for. And general signs of use, something to kind of watch for. I know a lot of this looks like normal teenage behavior. We're talking it's going to be a more drastic change. Okay, so yes, they're going to have uh, mood swings, but it's going to be very evident mood swings. And you're going to be like, whoa, what's going on with you? Okay, so any of this stuff here could be signs of possible substance use. So what do we do? Best thing I can tell you, stay informed, okay? Uh, plug into the coalition. Uh, 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 read every so often. Uh, pull up a re reputable source and read. Um, get onto my, I have an email distribution. I have Ryan, I think you're still on it. Get onto that, I'll send stuff out. And probably some of this might not be a surprise to those people that have been on it. They've seen and heard some things over the years that's been going on. Uh, obviously, all this other stuff, build skills, look at what's going on in your community, you know, support prevention, and uh, it doesn't matter what the substance is, prevention is prevention, okay? We don't want kids getting into this and starting into this and then uh, possibly developing problems down the road. Values and skills that can be built into kids, so if you have elementary kids, it's a great thing to start building these things into them and reinforcing them and getting them kind of thinking a little differently about how to handle stress, how to communicate, how to set goals, even if it's little goals, that's great. They can still learn how to set goals. Um, ACEs, we're running out of time, so I'm not gonna get into that. Local efforts, lots of things that have been going on. Plug into the coalition, you'll find out what's going on in Benton County. 
some uh, sources, some different sites that you can look at. This is a DEA site, Get Smart About Drugs. Obviously, you can follow ASAP. There's a Facebook page. There's a website. Uh, and you can plug into the Benton County Above the Influence Coalition and distribution list for each of the counties. There's my email. There's my email address, my phone number. So if you're really displeased with how this went, you can really give me an earful. <laughs> Uh, and I will take whatever questions you guys have, and hopefully that wasn't too fast, but it's packing a lot of trends into a very short time frame. Okay. 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 Is that okay? Sure. I'll be on our camera. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Well, <laughs> Am I off the hook? No questions? We're good? Okay. Hope it was helpful. I really do. If nothing else, just kind of identify where things have gone. 